and uh, we are gone. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, this is the fourth class, uh, fourth grade level uh, question and answer that I've had. Uh, last night was freshmen and seniors. Tonight, we just had the sophomores, and now it's the juniors. Um, and um, what I want to say to all of you is it was actually easier with the freshmen. And the reason I say that is uh, they don't know what Old Rochester was like prior to March 13th, 2020. Um, so they just, you know what, how freshmen are, they just kind of go with the flow and um, you tell them how it's going to be and this is how it's going to be and they've got nothing to compare it to. Uh, it's harder for the older grades. Uh, it's really hard for juniors because the school that you left on March 13th does not look like the school you're going to walk into this week. All right, school is going to look very different. All right, but I want you to hear from me that it must look like school. Okay, it will not look like last spring, March, April, May, and June, where you could sleep all day and work all night and be considered accountable. That's not accountability. Okay, this needs to look like school, and school looks like 7:30 to 2 o'clock. So please be mindful of. Uh, this that if you fell into this this sleep cycle or this work cycle where you thrived at midnight and you were on your devices all night long with friends, it's not going to work for this school year. It needs to look like school. Yes, homework is back. Okay, so um, but it's school's going to look different, and that's why we're here so that we can walk you through those differences and to give all of us uh, the best chance to be safe and to um, make a awesome school year, okay? I believe you, we are all part of the best high school in America, um, regardless of COVID or not. And I believe that we have a plan in place for this school year that will uh, make the most of the guidelines that we have to follow. So uh, welcome, buckle up. We're here until I have to get off at 7.30 for another session. So at any point during the night, if you want, you can populate the chat uh, with questions. I'd be happy to answer them as we go. Um, I'm going to first begin by sharing my screen because I think some of the slides from last night's um, freshman orientation, I think make a lot of sense to share with, because really we're all freshmen this year. We're all, we're all new students. Okay. I've said to my staff many times, you're all going to be like first year teachers all over again. All right. Cause we've never done this before. We've never prepped like this before. All right. So all of us are new students. So a freshman orientation makes a lot of sense for me. So I'm going to turn it over right now uh, to my screen. Um, my screen share. Again, you can populate the Google, uh, excuse me, the chat feature if you have questions, and we'll go from there. So this was, uh, whoa, 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 started. just finished the last Zoom. All right, here we go. So the orientation was last night, big deal. So all of us, you, all you students right now should be comfortable logging into your PowerSchool because everything you're going to need is in two places, PowerSchool and your school email. So if at any point, anything I say tonight, you're like, oh crap, I don't think I got that email. I don't think I've got a Google Classroom invite or something's wrong. Let's fix it tonight. Email me. I'm not going to fix it during this Zoom session, but if you email me tonight, I will make it happen for you tonight while I'm watching the Celtics. No one populate in the chat what's going on in the Celtics game. Thank you. Um, so you got to be able to log into your PowerSchool. Nothing's changed there. If you were a student here last year, it's your uh, historical PowerSchool login since you've been at the junior high. So this is the screen. Then you are all used to this screen. This screen here is what you all call the grades and attendance screen. Teachers in the building, I call it the quick lookup screen. Why is it called the quick lookup screen? Because it has everything that I need when I need to look for you or learn about you. It's got, this is where your grades will be. These are the classes that you're taking. This is your week. Your attendance goes here if you are absent or anything. And then this here is the expression. And this is what looks different th this year. Okay. Things are different. You are used to school back in March, February, January. You're used to classes running every other day, classes rotating times of day. Life is different. You're all new students this year. So we're going to spend some time talking about these expressions tonight. So that's the grades and attendance piece. All right. So when you log into PowerSchool, go there, do that now while I'm talking all night, go in, check, check your PowerSchool. Ask yourself, have each of these teachers invited me to their Google Classroom? Because I got to be there tomorrow in a live video conference, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So from here, um, I, did, I did spend a slide talking about the expression, and I'm going to take you there now. So this, these, this expressions here came right out of this. All right, so you all have your expressions. Now, please do me the favor right away of ignoring what's in parentheses. We just couldn't figure out how to do this within PowerSchool. So these parentheses are there. Ignore the parentheses. 
everyone's expression has, everyone has three expressions for every class and they're different for every class, okay? So the three expressions mean different, each of them means a different thing. The first is a number. You're used to the number being a block. That's the same. We have four blocks a day, okay? That hasn't changed. What has changed is the rotation. No rotations this year. So you always have first block at the same time, second, third, and fourth. So the number in your expression is the block. The second is the day, okay? We have two days. You're used to that. We have two days. We've got an even day and an odd day, okay? Um, and so day one is A, day two is B. So take a look here, everybody. So that second expression is the day, all right? So if you look here, these A classes, these are all day one classes, and now we get into the day two schedule, all right? Uh, now, what's different this year is uh, day one is actually Tuesday and Wednesday is day one. Back to back. Thursday and Friday are day two. So instead of it every other day, we put two of them back to back. So Thursday, Friday is both day one. Excuse me. Thir uh, Tuesday, Wednesday is both day one. Thursday, Friday is day two. And then the last letter is the cohort. All right. And again, that cohort depends on the alphabet. That student here has a last name A to K. So he or she is in cohort A. L to Z is cohort B. So you should look right away. You should have the same letter for all your classes. You don't want to have A's and B's here for number for the third expression because then you're in two cohorts. How do you keep that straight? So three digits, three expressions, the block, the day, and the cohort. Got it. All right. So now the next screen you should go to, I would click on is the My Schedule in PowerSchool, right here, My Schedule. And it'll pull up something like this. And I want you to understand that this is the old here. This was like before I fixed everything a couple of days ago. So these times are wrong. It has a homeroom, which we're not going to. Uh, it has eight of, all wrong. It is correct right now in PowerSchool. So when you log into PowerSchool and you click on My Schedule, it is correct. What I would encourage you to do is, because this is a short week, that's going to start with a Monday schedule on Wednesday. I would encourage you to click this button here the next week so you can really get a sense of the full week layout where you have Monday is a full hybrid out day. Tuesday and Wednesday, you have your day one classes. Thursday and Friday have your day. So I would recommend you clicking on this next week button here. Okay, so what are we getting into here? So Wednesday, tomorrow, you have all of your classes running, and I'm gonna get to there in a minute. You have all of your classes running in a video conference. Hopefully you're in the Google Classroom with your teacher. Hopefully you are uh, ready for your times that you have to be online. I'll get there in a minute. Thursday, this is the first time we're welcoming students back into school. It's so exciting, welcome back. So you start at 7.30, okay? So this student, because they're in cohort A, has an in-person Thursday. So this is in-person in the classroom. This student, remember two days in a row are day two. This student on Friday has, this is time that they're working on their own from home, but they're still working in calculus from home within Google Classroom. And then they have a live check-in time at the end of the block, all right? This, again, has to look like school, everybody. Attendance is taken here. And attendance is taken here. You're getting attendance every day in every class, okay? So again, this is a hybrid in day where you're in person for full instruction. And this is a hybrid out day where you're out of the building learning from home. So maybe a question in the chat here. Has PowerSchool been updated with the correct teachers? Yes. All right, uh, next slide. So very important. I don't wanna confuse you, but we're gonna confuse you. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday the 16th, we're going to call it a Monday and follow a traditional Monday schedule. And then every Monday moving forward is going to be Monday. And the Mondays are the hybrid out schedule and Wednesday goes back to normal. So only for tomorrow are we going to follow a Monday schedule. This is hybrid out. Okay, so tomorrow. And here's how it looks for obviously here's the Monday. But again, it's Wednesday, everybody. So here's the full schedule. Now, first thing to notice on the Monday schedule is we're only using two expressions. We're using the block and the day where we don't have the cohort here because the beauty of the hybrid out, full day hybrid out on Monday is we bring the two cohorts together. So we did not need to put one AAB or one AA. It's both cohorts together, okay? So we broke the day in two. We have, our, these are our day one classes. 
So hopefully everyone here knows who they have day one, block one, regardless of the cohort, because they need to be in a video conference tomorrow, okay? All right, for attendance, and you're there for a half hour. Then you go to your second block class on day one for a half hour, your third class, your fourth class, and then we take a midday break. I see some questions in the chat. Is there a Zoom meeting for studies? Awesome question. No, there are no uh, Zoom studies, okay? So if you have a study in your schedule, you don't have to check in from home. You don't have to participate in a video. Con That's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked it. On hybrid out days, will there be assigned work? Yes. Will it be due that day? Maybe. That's up to the teacher. Will Thursday be a day one or a day two? Thursdays are always a day two. Has the amount of passing time changed? Give me time. I'll get there. All right, here we go. Let's keep moving. If you're wondering what questions am I reading, some of them are private questions, some of them are public. Now, so we've gone through half of our day on Wednesday tomorrow and then every Monday moving forward. Then we have a nice midday break because none of us believe that you sitting behind a computer all day long is good for you, good for us. We don't want to Zoom all day long, not good. So then at the end of the midday break, we're back for our day two classes, okay? And at these times. So hopefully we all are ready to go tomorrow, all right? Because if you're not there, you're absent, all right? It's a real day of school tomorrow. All right, so these are half hour sessions tomorrow. After, t oh, all right, so after tomorrow, Thursday, we are ready to welcome students back to school. So we have the arrival to school, and you're probably like, Mr. Duvall, I'm a junior. Obviously, I know how to arrive to school, okay? But maybe Maddie doesn't know. Maybe she needs help getting uh, the new way to get to school because everything has changed. So we have to review how to arrive to school. Question in the chat, let's see here. Earlier, you said that power school should be updated with the correct teachers. But for me, at least, it says I have Ms. Cowan for honors physics. Is this actually correct? I'm guessing, Jake, that you are part of the remote uh, learning plan. And if you are in the remote learning plan, then yes, Ms. Cowan is not your honors physics teacher. She's your honors, phys honors physics supervisor. Let's continue. There are four ways to arrive at school. So you take the bus. Let's hope that none of you right now are thinking, oh, I think I'll take the bus tomorrow and I'll just walk to the bus stop and I'll get on the bus and I'll go to school. You can't. We have to know 100% of our bus riders all the time. So hopefully you already told us you were gonna take a bus. And if you haven't done that, I don't know that there's room. We are actually having waiting lists to take a bus. So if you're sitting here panicking and thinking, I don't know what's going on in the bus, with the bus, I'm gonna ask that you email Miss Harvey our assistant principal, I'm putting her email address in the chat for you to reference if you're concerned about the bus. But if you do take the bus, how do you get into the building? You're gonna enter the building under the calf. So here, you're all familiar with, this is behind the school. This big structure here is the calf. You're gonna enter under the cafeteria. That's how you get into school, okay? The second way to get to school is with the student driver. So you're juniors. Many of you are probably driving to school this fall. Awesome. Um, we are gonna allow you to park on campus for free until October 1st. Do not ask me before October 1st for a parking pass. We're not ready for you. Park for free, don't ask questions, just do it if you drive. So if you drive to school, you're gonna enter, you're gonna park in student parking. Mr. Tilden will be outside in the morning to make sure you find student parking. Then you're gonna enter what I'm calling the, the, this is like the preschool loop, but this is behind the gym. Here's the gym, here's the door you're gonna go in. It's right there, all right? So if you're a driver or you're going to school with a student driver, maybe a sibling drives, a neighbor, however you get to school, uh, that's where you'll enter. Then there are two other ways. Your parents drop you off, okay? So we have two entrances to campus. We've got the Marion entrance and the Mattapoisin entrance. Why do I call it the Marion entrance? Because it's the entrance closest to the Marion border when you're driving on Route 6. And the same thing for the Mattapoisin entrance. So for the Marion entrance, you're gonna enter it's, here's the big ugly sign here. If anybody has a good idea of how to beautify this space and you want to volunteer for free, please do. We, this, I hate driving by this. Anyway, but this is where you'll enter from the Marion entrance. This is the auditorium and gym entrance, okay? And then if you're taking the Mattapoisin entrance, meaning your parents are dropping you off, here's the front entrance, there's the flagpole, and you'll go in the front door. That's how you get to school. Uh, that's how you enter the building safely. If directed, I'm into the chat now. If directed study and hybrid out day is first block, you need to check in for attendance prior to block two. No, good for you, Ethan. You get to sleep in a little bit, all right? 
it's it stinks because for some kids because we don't rotate the blocks it's awesome for kids like you ethan to sleep in on those days you don't have to check in, in your studies it's just life okay um keep going 720 it's magic time all right it's the only time all day long that we will ring a bell all right we are only going to ring a bell at 720 a.m all right so ask yourself when you come into school did I get off the bus at 10, uh, 710 and I'm early? If I am earlier than 710, 720 entering the building, I'm going straight to the cafeteria. If I'm after 720, I'm going straight to block one. Please note, there is no home room. You're going right to your block one class every day. So 720, that's the magic time, okay? You get to school before 720, go to the calf. We will socially, safely, socially distance you. You get to school after 720, go right to block one. Don't go to homeroom and definitely don't go to your locker. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, will we have the ability to connect with te the teachers delivering the classes? Or do questions need to be sent through teachers noted in PowerSchool? Always access the teachers through PowerSchool, okay? All right, uh, 720. So that's the magic time. It's the only bell of the day is 720. Now, here is the bell schedule. This gets crazy if you look at this. Oh my God, there's a lot happening here. This does not look like old Rochester from last February, okay? Lots has changed. I will pull this apart for you step-by-step step tonight. I did email this out this evening to both students and parents, and I give you four different versions of it. I gave you the full version, then I gave you the first lunch, middle lunch, and last lunch. So pick the version that's gonna work for you. You find out tomorrow what lunch you have every day, from your block three teachers. So you don't know yet which lunch you need. And most of you are sitting scratching your head, what do you mean middle lunch, Mr. Duvall? We only have two lunches. Well, guess what, folks? We have two, we have three lunches this school year. Life is different. Back to the chat. If you're taking a science with a double block, how does your study lab block work with the back-to-back -back classes? Great question. Um, there is no study anymore. You will always have the back-to-back -back lab blocks. All right, it's a very good question. All right, so let's get back here. So this is a lot to absorb this slide. Let's shift ahead here. I'm gonna pull it apart for you, just piece by piece. This is the top, okay? So Monday in a full week is the hybrid out. Okay, that's the day, that's the Monday, it's the hybrid out. It's these times here, which we just talked about earlier. This is the Monday schedule, okay? So pulling that out for you. The second thing, Cohort A comes on Tuesday, Thursday. Cohort B comes Wednesday, Friday. Folks, please, even if you're not in the building, it, you are in school that day from home. You have to be accountable. So I'm pulling this apart, step by step for you. Now, block one. All right, so where are we? We just did the top. Now we're over here onto block one. All right, what is happening in block one? Remember, there's no homeroom. You're going straight to block one at 7.30. If you arrive at 7.29 and 59 seconds, you're on time. If you arrive at any time after that, you're late. And attendance is important. And being marked tardy is important. That's how students uh, accrue detentions by being late to school. Make sure you arrive prior to 7.30. So this is the gray up here. These are all hybrid in times. These are all times you're in the building, anything in gray. So look, this 1AA flipped here into cohort out of the building. So anything in gray is in the building. So What's happening during 7.30 to 8.55? You have in-person instruction. Life is good. You, we've got awesome teachers. They're going to teach the crap out of you during that time. We're excited about it, okay? Um, what you need to know is that during this instructional time, it is required that every teacher take a mask break with their students. So you can expect a five to 10 minute mask break outside with your teacher, okay? All mask breaks are outside and you will have one during your time, guaranteed. So if you've got four classes a day, you can be insure, assured of having four um, mask breaks, all right? So this is in-person in instruction like you are used to. At 8.40, the classroom teacher, like earlier I was showing you that calculus class. So this, let's call calculus 20 students. 10 of them are in the cohort A and they're here in front of the teacher from 7.30 to 8.55. The other 10 are at home from 7.30 to 8.55, uh, 7.30 working in the Google Classroom, getting work done, getting ready for their mandatory 8.40 check-in. That's where the teacher takes attendance. That's where the teacher uh, collects work that's due. That's where the teacher answers questions and perhaps assigns homework for the next day. Not optional, accountable, you gotta be there. All right, that happens at 8.40. Now we're at the end of block one. Notice, 
855 to 903. We used to have, we used to have five minutes of passing time. And that included times where you could go to your locker and all of that. Now we've gone from five to eight, but we're not letting you go to your locker. So what's the difference? We are going to carefully orchestrate uh, and choreograph who can leave and when. So that's why I said there's only one bell at 720. If I rang a bell at 855, you would immediately think class is over and I'm going to start running through the hall. Nope. We've got to make sure we're moving when told to move. So we will carefully choreograph who can leave and when. So listen for the PA. We will tell you when to move. You won't make, you won't make a mistake. We will tell you. So out of this eight minutes from 855 to 903, you're going to have um, – really only two minutes where you're moving, the other time you're gonna have butt in a seat in a classroom, safe, socially distanced. So we're in block two, same thing. Your in-person instruction is this time, you've got your mask break, life is good. If you're home, you're working during this time, then you're checking in at 10.13, okay? We then have our eight minutes of passing time. Now this is where life gets a little different, actually very different for you juniors. We have three lunches now. so. Each of these lunches are different. This is first lunch. So you would go from 1028 to your lunch, have your lunch. Then you would go to your first, uh, then you would go to your full instruction your, and you have your mask break, all of that good stuff. And then you have 1212, you've got the hybrid out check-in. That's why it's so important on Wednesday tomorrow to know what lunch you have every day because your check-in times are predicated on when your lunch is. If you have middle lunch, you will start with instruction. Then you will go to lunch. Then you will return to instruction. And then there's the hybrid out check-in time. Last lunch, you'll begin with instruction. You'll have your mask break, do all that fun stuff. And then your hybrid out check-in followed by your lunch. Then we move to a block four. Again, full instruction, hybrid out check-in, mask breaks, all that good stuff. No bell at two o'clock. If we rang the bell, it would look like a Simpsons episode where everybody's pouring outside, running to their, when it can't do that safely. So at two o'clock, we will first dismiss the bussers. Sorry, student drivers, you will be second. And then parent pick up after that, okay? Whew. No questions. Either you're bored silly, we're doing a great job, or we're doing a terrible job. Let's keep going. All right. Question in the chats. It seems to me there's a lot of transition time and this will reduce the class time. Quite the contrary. Uh, we have last year classes were 75 minutes. This year they're 85 minutes. So you, that is an incorrect statement. All right, let's keep going. All right, so now some handbook topics I wanted to talk about with you uh, that are important for, oh, let's start here. Important handbook language. So in the old days, you were not allowed to change your schedule after the last day of school. Uh, the only changes you could make were level changes. Well, guess what, folks? You chose those courses in February of 2020. Can we all agree life has changed since February of 2020? So your classes that you chose, you may not be feeling anymore, okay? Or maybe you had a summer where you're like, uh, AP work, not feeling it right now. Or I signed up for ceramics thinking I'd be in the ceramics room, but now I'm gonna do ceramics for my kitchen table. No thank you. So we have an ad drop period between right now and October 1st. So get the schedule you like, get the one that you want. If you we have never allowed kids to drop AP classes. This is the deal of a century. If you want to get out of your APs, get out. If you want to add an AP, jump in. All right, so you have a two-week add drop period until October 1st. Here's the trick. We will only make a schedule change if we can safely fit you in the class. What does that mean? In a normal school year, there's like 24, 25, 26 desks in a classroom. You're going to walk into a school where there's only 12 desks in a room. So I can only change your schedule if it fits. And what do I mean by it fits? If you fit, if we can get your butt in a seat in that class. If there's not an empty desk in that class, you're not taking that class. All right, so we can make changes, we will make changes, but as long as we can fit you. After October 1st, term one ends on the 16th. So between October 1st and November 16th, you can change your levels. All right, so that's the old handbook policy level changes up until term one, but we do have the ad drop period this year. All right, I apologize for going fast. I do have to finish by 7.30 for another Zoom. So here we go, we're almost done, promise. Oh, there's a question in the chat. <clears throat> Will the ad drop period count remote learners? Correct, yes. Uh, well, this question says remote learners who wanna to switch to the hybrid. Uh, you can switch at any time from remote to hybrid and from hybrid to remote. That is not a problem, we can accommodate that switch. 
Handbook topics. Some of these I've touched on, others I, I wanna make sure I emphasize. Attendance, attendance. We have an attendance policy at Old Rochester. Nothing's changed. We will alert families on the 6th, 12th, and 18th absence of the school year. Nothing's changed. Uh, that's for daily attendance. For class attendance, nothing's changed. You can lose credit if you're absent from class. All right, so we have thresholds for our attendance policy. So nothing's changed. Even on those hybrid out days, you need to be accounted for. Accountability has to be there, all right? Backpacks. Last year, we spent so much time with making sure we had the right size backpack and that did everything fit and use this brand, not that. Uh, now without lockers, carry the biggest bag you can, you can hold on to. You're gonna have to carry everything from class to class. So make sure you have something manageable to do that. So their backpack policy is carry a big backpack. That's the policy. <clears throat> Where are instruments being stored during the day? I would ask your uh, music teacher. <clears throat> School hours. So please pay attention, especially parents out there. Uh, the school hours. We can accommodate students in the building from 7 a.m. until 2.15. We can't accommodate students in the building after 2.15. So if that is problematic for you, we recommend a bus. If you can't get on a bus because it's a waiting list, you need to arrange for transportation. We cannot accommodate students in the building, at least initially, at the first week of school after 2.15. All right. Uh, I want everyone to hear this loud and clear. Um, no one got into education to just have the academic piece. We believe in the full school experience and that no one believes that more than I do, okay? I've been a coach, a class advisor, a club advisor at Old Rochester. I believe in the full student experience. So if you're wondering about sports and clubs and activities, I want them, all right? But I want them once we've safely returned to school. So initially, I gotta make sure that we can safely um, house our students from seven to 215 before I even consider uh, 215 and on. Questions in the chat. What's going on with music classes? They're running. Talk to Mr. Barnacle, it's gonna be awesome. How many mask breaks each day? One for each class. Where will the mask break be? Outside. During a mask break is gonna be instruction. Maybe. Will we be getting a copy of our schedule on the first day back like in previous years? No, go into power school. All right, let's keep going. Um, buses, I did say, hopefully you do know if you're taking a bus or not. Email Miss Harvey, you just can't decide. I'm taking the bus today, hi. You can't do that. Electronic devices, here's a biggie, okay? So we have forever been uh, trying to teach responsible use of technology to students. It is always, we've always said responsible use of technology is at your locker, use your phone, but not during instruction. Don't use your phone during instruction. Well, guess what? There are no lockers this year. So we still believe in responsible use of phones, and here are the four times that you can use your phone this school year. Please pay attention. Number one, during lunch. Number two, during directed studies. Number three, during passing time. But let's, let's talk about passing time. Passing time is eight minutes. Two of those eight minutes, you're going to be walking through the hall. It's not responsible to be walking through the hall safely while with your head buried in your phone. So of those eight minutes, you can use your phone for the six minutes where your butt is in a seat, not when you're walking. And then the last, the fourth time you can use your phone is during the hybrid out time. If you're in your calculus class and your teacher has shifted to the hybrid out students and you're hybrid in and you're doing some work, you can listen, uh, you can use your phone at that time. So that's the phone policy. Beyond that, we are encouraging a bring your own device model. So if you have a device, bring it. That's a laptop or Chromebook or tablet. If you need a device, we are issuing school devices. Email me right after this and I'll make sure you have a school issued device. We are expecting all juniors in high school to arrive to school every day with a charged device, whether it's the school device or your own, it is a reasonable expectation of a junior in high school to bring a charged device. That's your job. Bring it, bring it, bring it in the chat. During hybrid out days, if a student needs outside of a 15 minute window, will they have resources and need of assistance? Absolutely, all right, and the classroom teachers will communicate those. During study, can we go to different teachers that also have the study or the library? Yes, you can, all right, yes, you can do that. All right, next is hallway travel, all right, hallway travel. Um, you're all either driving or learning how to drive you would not drive on the left side of the road. You'd get a ticket. 
Similarly, you would not walk down the hall this year on the left side of the hall. Stay to the right when you're walking. There are one-way uh, stickers on the floor to remind you to stay to the outside of the hall. We have to do it, folks, to be safe. If any of you out there are like wanting that fighting chance at a homecoming dance or a prom, we got to do this safely. All right. You jeopardize all of that by not following basic instructions. Whoever the knucklehead is that's using the whiteboard, please stop. Freshman orientation was last night. I will find you. Okay. Please stop. All right. Um, so that's hallway travel. Follow the flow of traffic. We will carefully choreograph who that, how to move through the building safely. Clean up. During your in-person instruction, all students must clean their workspace before leaving. There are spray bottles. There are wipes in every class. You are responsible to clean your workspace before leaving and going to the next location. That is part of the in-class experience. If you arrive at a class and you're not confident that the class before it left it sanitized for you, you may begin class with a sanitizer. All right, you can start and clean your space. All right, so you're cleaning up definitely at the end of every class. Some of you may want to start class with a cleanup. Masks, 100% of the time you're in the building, the masks are on with the exception of lunch. If you're walking down the hall and your mask is down, you're doing something terribly wrong. Keep the mask on. If you're telling me, oh, but Mr. Watts, fine, I'm on a mask break. No, 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 the mask breaks are outdoors. There is no gray with this policy. You're either in class with a mask, in the hallway, in the building with a mask on, or you're at lunch, or you're outdoors, period, okay? There is no uh, gray in that policy. Extra help, so in a normal school year, teachers stay after school for extra help, but like as I said, we're trying to clear the campus by 2.15, so part of Wednesday tomorrow, we're encouraging teachers to uh, communicate what their extra help policy will be, meaning that you should make an appointment with them for extra help initially. They will likely be video conferences, but that's part of teachers um, communicating that tomorrow. General rules, teachers will review general rules with all of you and a code of conduct. A lot of that involves appropriate behavior in a video conference, okay? So for example, drawing like this guy did or girl did is not appropriate. Uh, you would wear a shirt when you went to school every day. So when you're out of school, you still need to wear a shirt when you go to class, all right? The shirt can't have a swear on it, all right? You can't zoom from bed like, you know, dress and act for the part you want in life, all right? So we have codes of conduct for students um, wh while they're learning from home as well. I'm gonna hit the chat here. Um, if hybrid starts at 7.20, uh, why is my bus picking me up at 8.15? I don't think the bus is picking you up at 8.15. I would email Miss Harvey. If a device starts to die during the middle of the day and a student has a charger with them, can they charge it? Yes, good question. If we go back fully in person, will double block lab sciences have a class again, a study again? Yes. Wait, never mind. Okay. Can you clarify about acceptable masks? Are the blue and white paper acceptable? So I think you probably mean like the, the, the disposable kinds of masks. Uh, Maddie, thanks for asking, Maddie. It's a good question. Yes, those are acceptable. How will bathroom breaks work? I'm glad you asked. Let me talk about bathrooms. Bathrooms are going to be closed four times during the school day for sanitation. The sanitizing will occur the last 10 minutes of every class through passing time and into the first 10 minutes of each class. We just can't have bathrooms open during passing time. We have to know 100% of how many people are in the bathroom all day long. So uh, we, have, we have a software that we're going to use. Students must use the software to request bathroom access. We are limiting two bathroom, two students in a bathroom at any time. So the software, you go in, you log in, you request the bathroom. The software will say yes or no. If it says yes, go to the bathroom. If it says no, that means the bathroom is full and wait your turn in the software. If uh, you wanna try a different bathroom, good luck to you, okay? So we just can't have free access to bathrooms because we don't try to keep us safe and sanitized um, so two in at a time, nothing during passing time, and that's how we're going to do it. If a student is sick with a cold, can he or she not show up to school and do a hybrid out for the day? Yeah, they should. That's a really good plan. All right. There's a lot we've learned uh, from this experience, and we believe, I believe you can learn from home. All right. For student drivers, how are parking passes going to work? Uh, 
ask me October 1st, all right? But they're gonna only be $25 this year instead of 50, so that's good news. Will gender neutral single use bathrooms be open? Yes, they'll be in the software. Do we need to notify the school then if we are sick? No, you don't. Teachers take attendance, period. Notify the teacher. There are no bubblers, but will students be able to use the water bottle fillers? Yes, they will, thank you. I would recommend bringing your own water and bringing a water bottle to fill with the refillable stations. Excellent question, Edward. Any other questions? If someone is having an emergency, has to go to the bathroom immediately, will the teacher let them? Yes. Good question. How will the cafeteria work? Um, so the cafeteria has all the tables are out and they've been replaced by desks. So you will have to sit at a desk. The desks are seven feet apart so that you can sit down and take your mask off and eat your lunch. Oh, it's lousy folks. I get it, but it's what we got to do. Is there an issue with other drinks like coffee in the morning? Great question. You can drink your coffees. What about the nurse? The nurse will be in the software as well. Good question, Cynthia. These are awesome questions, everybody. <clears throat> Keep the questions coming, everybody. These are great. Is there talk of the possibility of intramurals happening for sports? Yes, there is, Tavish. We all need it. When you bring your lunch, where is it stored? On your persons, like it always was. So in the past, you'd stored it in your locker. Now it'll be in your backpack or whatever you're carrying with you. Good question. Books and binders, do you recommend the same amount of tape we use? Uh, probably not, actually. I, I probably wouldn't bring that stuff. Lots of teachers aren't gonna use any paper this year. So make sure you bring a charge device. That's a starting point. Can we still sit? Anywhere for lunch. Yep, you get to pick your seat. We are we were close to assigning seats for lunch, but we did not go there. Will we be able to bring over-the-counter medication to school? So, no, you can't. Thank you for asking. Do not bring over-the-counter medications. You can't have that on your persons. Has to go through the nurse. What about the MCAS? It was missed for our sophomore year. So the MCAS was postponed, not canceled, but we're still waiting for that new date. So don't don't stay up at night worrying about the MCAS right now. Will we be counted absent for the day if our internet went out? Great question, Elijah. If your internet goes out, you have a power outage or something happens at home, uh, email the teacher as soon as you can. We will account for your attendance. We are reasonable people. It is reasonable to expect power outages and internet issues. Communicate with us. Can we bring jackets and umbrellas for inclement weather? Please do, Edward. Can we bring charges for our laptops? Yes. These are awesome questions. I feel like we're in a rapid fire moment. What's gonna happen on snow days? I don't know, let's keep going. Rapid fire. <clears throat> All right, as we're winding down, I just want you to know that, oh, here we go. Do you say that if a student must be out or late, they contact the teacher directly? Yes, please do. What is gonna to happen to new transfer students? Uh, hopefully they have a great school year. I don't know what the question is. Um, do you specifically have any tips that you could give us in particular? My, my tips would be get into the Google Classrooms, stay in the Google Classrooms, be engaged, input equals output. Any other questions? I'm gonna wrap up because I have to transition to a 7.30 uh, Zoom. The last thing I would say to all of you is while school does not look the same, uh, I am thrilled for you that you have an in-person opportunity. We are excited to see you again. Will students be allowed to use cell phones at lunch? Yes, Zach. Are there any rules for anything in the background on Zoom? School appropriate. What happens if the school Chromebook doesn't work? Email me, we'll get you a new one. Any other questions? Quick, 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 quick. Five, four, three, two, one. No more questions. Okay, um, thank you everybody. We'll send this out. We are excited to have you back. Don't eat on a Zoom call. Would you eat during a job interview? Probably not, don't do it. You know, be professional. Act for, uh, pretend you're playing for the role you want in life. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you, everybody.